in our studies about Solomon, and uh, Solomon is one of the greatest illustrations in the Bible of someone who had absolutely no self-control whatsoever. He had no uh, self-control. He was not filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you may be seated and uh, uh, turn uh, as we look at 1 Kings chapter uh, 3 and verse 3. Now, um, Solomon is a very interesting character, of course, in the Bible. We'll see that tonight. Uh, very interesting things about uh, Solomon. Now, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, um, and we read here in uh, uh, verse 3, the Bible says here, see, uh, and Solomon loved the Lord. See, he loved the Lord. Now, as a young man, the Bible is very, very clear that Solomon loved uh, the Lord. Now you turn over to 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse 5, and we find that Solomon is the one that built the temple where the Jews worshipped, the temple of Solomon, uh, one of the seven wonders of the world at that time. Now in 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse 5, And behold, I purpose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord God spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son whom I will set upon the throne, um, thy throne in thy room, he shall build a house unto my name. And then uh, in 1 Kings chapter 8 and in verse 13, the Bible says, I have surely built thee an house. See, he built the temple. The, uh, you had the tabernacle. After the tabernacle, you had the temple. And Solomon was the man who built the Old Testament temple, the temple of Solomon. And that's very important. Now, in 1 Kings 8 and verse 13, I have surely built thee uh, a house to dwell in and a settled place for thee to abide uh, uh, forever. So uh, Solomon started out well. He loved the Lord. The Bible says he loved the Lord. Now, if the Bible did not say he loved the Lord, You'd never know that Solomon really loved the Lord. Now, and um, because later on in his life, he really uh, messed up and certainly got out of the will of, uh, of God. Now, as you look at 1 Kings chapter 11. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 11, as we study about uh, Solomon, this man who had no self-control, who was not filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 1. So you have the word in the Bible, but, and there's a sermon in one word. See, he says, but. See, now you find the other side of Solomon, and you find how he got out of the will of God. The man who loved the Lord, built the temple, but now in 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, uh, but, see, uh, that's a small word, but that marks the change in the life of Solomon. See, uh, but, see, uh, that uh, radical change in uh, his life. And then, uh, as you read there in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1, but Solomon loved many strange women. Now, uh, the next word there to look at, see, is many. Say, not some, uh, say, not a few, but many. Say, many, as we read there uh, in the Word of God. Say, um, he loved many strange women, uh, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, and so forth. And um, of all these pagan nations that God condemned, you see, and said you were to be separated from them and you were never uh, to marry into them. So you have the word but, and then you have the word many. And uh, um, you see, now this is something as you read the Bible, see Solomon, the uh, interesting thing about Solomon, see he had no uh, excuse for sinning against God in this area. See, uh, the, there's no reason why he should have done uh, what he uh, did. He couldn't plead a, uh, uh, innocent or ignorant in this matter. Now, the reason for that 
is because the, the law plainly said he was not to do that. Now, turn to the book of Deuteronomy, just by way of um, review. Now, see, this is a book, the Bible says that uh, the kings needed to read, and they should read it every day. See, the book of Deuteronomy is the second law, the law given just before the children of Israel would go into the promised land. Now, in Deuteronomy uh, uh, chapter uh, uh, 7, and you read here in the uh, first five uh, uh, verses, <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 7, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many uh, nations before thee, the Hittites and Girgashites and all these ites here, and um, seven nations uh, greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God, verse 2, shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Now, see, the Israelites never did that. See, great lesson for us in our Christian lives. A lot of times we leave things uh, 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 to linger. We don't destroy things that God tells us to destroy. We don't get things out of our lives that God wants us to get out of our lives. Now, uh, he says, And thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Say, now Solomon should have known this very, very clearly. Thou shalt not make marriages with them. Thy daughter uh, thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they, and then say, the reason is given here in the Bible. Now, there's not only a prohibition, but many times when you read the Bible, there gives the reason for the prohibition. Now, in verse 4, the Bible says, For they, and this is the reason, for they shall turn away thy son from following me. In other words, uh, your children will not follow the Lord, that they may serve, say, other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. And thus shall, shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their groves, and uh, burn uh, their graven images. Now, see, that is clear in the law of God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. See, uh, Solomon could not plead uh, ignorance in this matter. Um, he could not plead that he was innocent and didn't know, because the Bible plainly said that they were not to marry these heathen uh, women. Now, not only that, it gives a reason that they will turn uh, uh, you away from the Lord and you'll wind up serving the heathen uh, gods. And then it says, thou shalt destroy, say, all of their places of worship where they worship these uh, pagan gods in idolatry. And the amazing thing about Solomon, rather than destroying their places of worship, Solomon built places of worship for the pagan gods. That's why the first uh, Kings 11 starts with but. See, the other side of uh, Solomon. And then um, in Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 17, see, the Bible says, and this is specifically written to the kings and specifically written for the kings. Now, it says in Deuteronomy 17, 17, uh, neither shall, uh, shall he multiply wives to himself. So there the Bible says that the king was not, it's talking about the king, to worship uh, or to ma multiply wives to himself. That is heart, and the reason is given, they'll turn your heart away from the Lord, neither shalt thou great, great, greatly uh, multiply to himself uh, silver and gold. So you don't trust in... Um, the, the things of the world. Now, um, in verse 18 of Deuteronomy chapter 17, and the Bible says, um, verse 18, and it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom. See, it's talking about the king. This is uh, a passage in the Bible specifically for kings. Solomon was a king. Uh, that he write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest and the Levites. Now, he's to write it out, 
and verse 19, and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. So he's to write the book of Deuteronomy, and then he's to read it all the days of his life. He is to read the book of um, uh, Deuteronomy, the law of God. And then that he may learn, say, why? To fear the Lord, his God, and say, to keep all the words of the law. Say, and uh, these statues to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, so that he turn not aside unto the uh, commandments to the right or uh, to the left, uh, to the end that he may prolong his days in the kingdom and his children in the midst of uh, Israel. Now, see, that's written to the king. And so the king was to be familiar with the law of God, especially in the book of Deuteronomy, and he was to read it and meditate in it. But you see, the Bible teaches that he was to do it. He was to obey it. He was not to marry heathen women. He uh, was to destroy their idols, you see. And um, uh, Solomon uh, did just the, the opposite. So, and the reason is given very obviously, you see, that his heart be not turned away or that his heart would not be turned away from the Lord. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 11, see, in 1 Kings chapter 11, you see, but King Solomon loved many strange or these heathen women together with the daughter of Pharaoh and the women, see, of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, uh, Hittites, and of uh, the nations concerning which the Lord, see, said unto the children of Israel, in the law of God, when he gave them their law years earlier, they shall uh, come unto you for surely they, see what it says here in verse 2, the reason why you don't do it, they'll turn your heart away from the Lord. See, and that's, you don't want that. You don't want them to turn your heart away from the Lord. And that's exactly what they did to Solomon. Neither shall they come in unto you, for surely, see verse 2, uh, they will turn away your heart after other gods, and um, Solomon clave uh, unto these in love. Now, I just have a, a little note here for everybody, and that's uh, when you study the Bible about all these different groups that he's talking about. For instance, he talks about uh, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, Zidonians, Hittites, and um, just uh, this is for your own study. Uh, take it home with you to be familiar with these people because they're condemned in the Bible. See, all of these uh, people are heathens and they are uh, certainly condemned in the Bible. So, but this is just to put in your Bible for a study sheet because they're mentioned several times in the Word of God that especially they were never to intermarry them because they would turn their hearts away uh, from uh, the Lord. Now, you see, and... Uh, and in verse 3 of uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, and he had 700 wives. And he had 300 concubines. Now, that's uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, and we read there in uh, verse 3. See, and what does the Bible say? See, his wives turned his heart away from the Lord. Now, in the Bible, in the law of God, he should have realized that that's what God says. You're not to marry these women because if you marry them, they'll turn your heart away from the Lord. See, all these ites here, I call them ites, are uh, pagan uh, nations that worship pagan uh, gods. So um, in verse 4 of chapter 11, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives did, see, when he was old, See, when he was old, uh, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord, and um, his God as the heart of David, his father. So uh, it's very clear as we uh, read the, the Word of God. See, now it's very uh, edifying in the Word of God, because see, this is what God said. God said, if you marry the heathen women, they will turn your heart away from the Lord. Now, that's why it's interesting to study the Old Testament, because here's a man that did that. See, he disobeyed 
the Bible. See, he married these heathen women and they did to him exactly what the Bible said they would do to him. See, they turned his heart away from the Lord. They did exactly what God said. And uh, the warning he gave uh, even specifically uh, to uh, the, uh, the kings. Now, and, uh, in the last part of verse 2, it says, He clave unto these in love. Now, um, and the verse 3, And he had 700 wives and uh, uh, princes and 300 concubines. So, uh, how many mistakes did Solomon make? See, how many mistakes did Solomon make? He made 999 mistakes, see, in relation to this. See, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Now, um, but to see what it says there, and uh, he clave unto these in love. Now, uh, see, and this, I think, is instructive as you read the Word of God, because that says... He really loved them. He clave to them in love. Now, uh, he really loved them, but I think here's a great illustration in the Bible of carnal love. This was not love of the, uh, produced by the Holy Spirit. This was not a love that honored the Lord because he was out of God's will. But you see, it was a uh, physical, carnal love and uh, that he had for these women. See, in other words, um, see, Solomon was a carnal man. No question about that. See, he was carnal. See, he was fleshly. He was given to the flesh, and the Bible says he claved to them. Now, um, and then the Bible says, unto these uh, in love. Now, uh, when you look at that in the Bible, that would simply... Uh, mean that he had, say, uncontrollable lust. Say, that was the problem that Solomon had. He had a lust, but it was uncontrollable, and he wound up marrying 700 women and 300 concubines. Now, now a lot of uh, uh, Bible teachers, one thing or another, they'd say, well, that's what they did, uh, you see, when he made peace treaties and trade agreements with other nations, they would give him uh, certain wives, a certain amount of wives, and, and that's uh, why he had a lot of wives, but that doesn't explain it, you see. Um, and, and, that, and the Bible doesn't indicate that's the reason why. The reason why he had all those wives, see, he clave unto them in love, see. Uh, but it was a carnal love. It was a fleshly love, and it was a love outside of the will of God, see. Solomon, now what we're talking about is the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and one of the great characteristics being filled with the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5.23, is self-control. The word temperance, self-control. See, that's a fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you see, illustrated in the life of Solomon, he had no self-control whatsoever. What an illustration in the Bible of a man who did not have any self-control, uh, and that's Solomon, which means what? See, he was not controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. He uh, was not filled with the Holy Spirit. See, he was a man of the flesh. Now, and that led to uncontrollable uh, lust. Now, um, when you think about that, meditate that uh, upon that in the Word of God. See, he had 700 wives, 300 uh, concubines. See, uh, what would that mean? See, now it says when he got old, his wives, plural, turned him away from the Lord. So, see, uh, what would that indicate? And I think it would be uh, indicative of the fact that, you see, uh, he was blatantly addicted to immorality. See, he was blatantly addicted to to sexual sins. And here uh, uh, is a um, tremendous passage in the Bible to warn all of us. See, that's an area of a person's life that can get out of control and um, can get way out of control. 
See, and the illustration of that in the Bible is Solomon. So you got way out of control in Solomon's life. You see, and uh, now that's a sin that uh, has a tendency to get out of control. Sexual sins, whether it's uh, pornography, immorality, you name it. Um, it's easy for those type sins to get out of control in a person's life. And as a result of it, they become addicted. And that's very common uh, in uh, today's society. Now, you see, in verse 3, see, 700 wives, 300 uh, uh, concubines, and his wives turned away his heart, obviously, uh, uh, from the Lord. But you see, the sad thing about Solomon is that he blatantly disobeyed the Bible. He blatantly disobeyed what God told him uh, to do. And rather than doing it, he disobeyed it. I mean, this is amazing when you study about uh, a Solomon. Now, a lot of people quote, and they say, well, he had 700 wives, 300 uh, concubines. But what? And they, they laugh and uh, uh, give excuses for it one thing or another. Say, here's a man who was addicted to sexual sins. He was uh, addicted to it. But why? Because he blatantly disobeyed what God's Word said about this matter. Now, the teaching in the New Testament is very similar. Uh, say, no one should marry an unsaved person. No one should date an unsaved person. Now, a lot of people say, well, there's nothing wrong with that. But everybody knows of people who did that, and it got out of control, amen? And it led to things that uh, they, they regret it in the, uh, the future. Now, in verses 4 and 5, we um, uh, uh, see here how he deliberately disobeyed God. See, in uh, 1 Kings 11 and verse 4, And it came to pass when Solomon was old. See, now by the way, that's another mention. See, it starts by saying uh, when he was old. See, now by the way, that is a scary thought in the Bible. That should scare everybody. Because now, say, when he was young, the Bible does say he served the Lord. He loved the Lord. He built the temple. We have the prayer of Solomon in the previous chapters. And it's a, many look upon that as a model uh, a prayer as we study the Word of God. There's no question about that. But uh, when he was old, he got away from the Lord. He sinned against God. He got out of the will of God. When he retired, see, there's a tremendous lesson here to retirees. Tremendous lesson here to older Christians. It's very easy for older people and older Christians to get out of the will of God. You say, oh no, the older you get, the stronger you get. You should, but here's an illustration of someone when he got old, he fell apart spiritually. And he did not follow what God uh, told him uh, to say. Now, you see, and then uh, they t uh, in verse 4, they turned his heart away uh, after other gods. Now, in verse 4, now what does that mean? This man that built the Jewish temple was worshiping pagan gods. How far could anybody get away from the Lord? You say, he's worshiping those gods. See, but it says here, turned his heart away, say, after other gods. And so, you see, Solomon was uh, ecumenical. He, he was basically saying, well, all roads lead to heaven. Now, we believe that uh, Jehovah is the one true living God, and that's certainly taught in the Word of God. But then he goes on, and uh, the Bible says he went after other gods. I mean, uh, it's unbelievable. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of uh, uh, David. Now, and the Bible says in verse 4, uh, verse 5, For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, and that's why I gave you that piece of paper. You can study these out on your own. These were pagan gods. See, Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, 
a, a filthy God, an immoral God, uh, a wicked God, and, um, and uh, Malcolm, an abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David uh, his fa uh, father. And so it's very interesting. Uh, you see, he uh, gave in to these gods. He compromised with these wicked pagan uh, uh, gods. Now, um, that's what happened as a result of marrying all these uh, women. Now, you see, when you study your Bible, in the Old Testament, that was always the tendency of Israel. It was always the tendency of Israel, you read the Old Testament, uh, to turn away from God and to worship false gods. See, and I think certainly that's a lesson for uh, America uh, uh, today. You see, um, especially older people, retirees, others, have they forsaken God? Are they really worshiping God? Are they following God? Or uh, have they given in to the gods of materialism and ease and comfort and relaxation? That's America. You see, um, that's not true of many other nations. People get older and uh, they still work as hard as when they were younger in sp uh, certain places of the world. But you see, America, uh, I think there's certainly a lesson here for all of us in uh, America. So... Um, but you see what it says here in the next verse, uh, in verse 6, And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Now, say David was not perfect, but David did repent when he sinned. And we, we actually have um, uh, passages in the New Testament, Romans chapter 4, of how David repented of his sin we read about that in the New Testament. And God forgave him of his sin. Now here's an interesting thing. That's never said in the New Testament about Solomon. The Bible never says Solomon repented. Now, let's make a note here. See, uh, most commentators and so forth, when they study about Sol uh, Solomon, they say, well, um, when they come to the end, they read the book of Proverbs. And Ecclesiastes, probably written early, uh, in his life, uh, Ecclesiastes seems may be written at the end of his life, and, um, and most all the commentators and Bible teachers will say that, um, that Solomon probably repented. You see, but you see, they're wrong in saying that. See, the Bible doesn't say he repented. And many Bible teachers say, well, we assume that before Solomon died, he repented. But you see, that's not Bible. See, the Bible, when you uh, carefully study the Bible, there is no illustration in the Old Testament that Solomon ever did repent. Now, people say they assumed he repented. Now, we re uh, but we don't read that in the Bible. And the reason why he did not repent, and I believe the Bible is clear, he did not repent is because the Bible never says he repented. Now, he was sorry, that's the book of Ecclesiastes, he was sorry for the way he lived, but there is no repentance on the part of Solomon for having 700 wives and 300 co uh, concubines. Nowhere, uh, even in Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, does Solomon ever repent of that sin. See, it's not found in the Bible. And that's why I believe that Solomon did not repent and then uh, get ahead of ourselves. And that's not what we're looking at tonight. But in the future, you study about Solomon, and that's why God judged Solomon. That's why God divided his kingdom. That's why you had the northern and the southern kingdom. That was a judgment of God upon Solomon. But anyway, as you read here, and the Bible says in verse 7, then did Solomon build and a high place for Kamosh. Now, a high place is a center of worship. Now, you see, Solomon is building a cathedral, a center of worship for a pagan god. He's actually building that. 
He built it. You say, now why, obviously, did he build it? See, to please his wives. See, that his wives worship these gods, so he built centers of worship for them. And uh, see, in verse 7, And did Solomon build a high place for Kamosh, uh, the abomination of Moab? See, that was the god of the Moabites. Who were the Moabites? The enemies of God. See, the Bible is amazing when you study the Bible. Here are the enemies of God. Here's the king of Israel, Solomon, building a worship center for the enemies of God. Why? To please his wives. See, so that uh, his wives wouldn't get angry. So he'd pamper his wives. And then the Bible says, and in the hill that is before Jerusalem for Moloch, See, and it says, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Now, that's very, very powerful in the Bible. See, the Bible says these were abominations. See, um, it says, uh, the abomination of the children of Ammon. See, the Ammonites were the enemies of God. And here is the king of Israel building a center of worship for the enemies of God, and it's a stone's throw from uh, the temple that he brought, uh, built. Uh, the the uh, temple in which to worship the living and the true God. Now, Kamash was the god of the Moabites, and Moloch was the fire god. See, now how detestable were these gods and these people? Now, see, that's why God says, utterly destroy them. Why? You see... Uh, they believed in, uh, well, Mo Moloch uh, literally means fire God because both were involved in human sacrifices. That was part of their religion. Say, human sacrifices. And Solomon is building worship centers for them. For these gods that believe um, uh, in a human sacrifice. Now that's the Bible. See, now that is why this chapter in the Bible is a scary chapter. You see, it should scare every one of us tonight. It should scare me. It should scare you. Now here's the reason why. How could somebody who one time loved the Lord get so far, far away from God? How could anybody get that far away from God? See, and it shows a wicked heart why people need to make sure uh, day by day they're in fellowship with uh, the Lord. Now, so Solomon built these uh, centers of worship right across the street from the Jewish temple that he built. Now, uh, that would be the equivalent today of having an abortion center in the, in the basement of the church. Does anybody know of any church that has an abortion center in uh, the basement of the church where they tell all the women to come in and abort your babies uh, in our church basement? We sponsor that as a church. Now, um, that would be reprehensible that's what Solomon did. See, that's why this is a scary passage in the Bible. It shows you how far somebody can get away from God if they're not in fellowship with the Lord. Now, when you study this in the Bible, it, uh, an amazing thing is that Solomon could have been the most wicked man in all the Bible the most wicked man in all the Bible. Now, why could we say that? He may have been the most wicked man in all the Bible. See, anybody have a thought? See, why could we say that about Solomon? See, now again, he, he builds all these centers of worship for the pagan gods who believed in human sacrifices, killing 
and offering their babies as a human sacrifice in the fire, and he builds an altar to worship those gods. See, that's wickedness. And that's a wicked man that would do that. And that's Solomon, you see, as we um, read the Word of God. Now, <clears throat> this is very edifying because, see, when you study the nation of Israel in the Bible, see, uh, the nation of Israel from this time until the time it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in the year 586 B.C., you see, that's 345 years. Now, uh, actually, yeah, 345 years. And all during those 345 years, when you study the prophets, major prophets, minor prophets, what is Israel's problem? They're always worshiping idols. They're always worshiping false gods. Now, the thing is, where did this worship of false gods begin? And it began with Solomon. Solomon paved the way to do it. You see, he was responsible for hundreds of years worshiping these false gods in the nation of uh, Israel. Turn in your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 23. This is 2 Kings chapter uh, 23. Now here's where you get into the chronology of the Bible. In 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 13, this is just before, this is about 35 years before Nebuch God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and destroy the nation of Israel, uh, Judah at that time. Referred to a Judah as that time. Now, now this is um, uh, about 30 years, 35 years before the Babylonian invasion. Now, this is the last good king in the nation of Judah. And we read about uh, him here in uh, the Word of God. Now, um, we read here about uh, Josiah. Now, and in verse 13 of 2 Kings chapter 23. Now, here is where you get the importance of studying your Bible, Bible chronology. This is about 300 years after Solomon died. I'm talking about 300 years after Solomon died. And in uh, 2 Kings 23 and verse 13, and the high places that were, say, before Jerusalem, in the city where they ought to worship God, the center of Jewish worship, you see, uh, they built all these high places to worship the pagan uh, gods. Now, it says, we're, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption. Now, what's that mean? It's referring to the Mount of Olives. And say, according to the prophets, say, according to those that had spiritual insight, that was the Mount of Corruption. That was a corrupt place where the Israelites were coming and worshiping those uh, uh, false gods, which God said were an abomination in the sight of, uh, of God. And so that's why it's referred to as the Mount of Corruption. Now, but you see what the Bible says here? 300 years after Solomon died. The Bible says, which Solomon, 300 years earlier, see, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had built it for Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh. See, the same thing as uh, 1 Kings chapter 11. Um, uh, the abomination of the Zidonians in Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Malcolm, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king dev defile. See, and uh, now what's that talking about? See, those centers of worship that Solomon built 300 years earlier were still in existence when uh, the nation was destroyed and Nebuchadnezzar came in and destroyed the nation. 
But you see, the Bible says, who built them? Why for 300 years did they worship pagan gods? Why for 300 years were they outside of the will of God? Because of Solomon. Because of what Solomon did. He built these worship centers for these gods, which the Bible says were abomination in the sight of God. Now, that's why we might say, we maybe have to research it out, was Solomon the most wicked man who ever lived in the Bible? Was he the most wicked man? Now, here's why we might say that. Say, for all those people that turned away from God, all those people that killed the prophets, all those people that sinned against God, for 300 years, they worshiped the false gods. And all of that was the fruit and the result of what Solomon did. He brought that false worship into the nation of Israel. And all those children that were burnt as human sacrifices and, and um, all of the corruption and uh, the sin and worshiping these gods that were an abomination in the sight of God. Say, it all started, the Bible says, 300 years later, who built those things? Who built that mount of corruption? As it's referred to. Who built that hill with all the uh, worship centers for the pagan gods? 300 years later, the Bible says, Solomon, you see, uh, Solomon, the king of Israel, had built it. Why? Because his wives influenced him to do it. And all those people that went to hell, all those people who turned against God, all those people who sinned against God, Solomon had a part in doing that. Because he's the one that built these... Um, sacred places to worship uh, the pagan gods. And that went on for 300 years. And at the end of it, you see, God says it was Solomon who built the hill of corruption. That's why we might say, can you think of anybody else in the Bible whose sin caused thousands of people to sin and get away from God for 300 years, for 300 years, that was Solomon. So he didn't die when he died. When he died, his sin uh, lived on. That is why when I was reading this passage and studying this passage in the Word of God, it scared me. Does it scare you? Does it scare me? Does it scare you? How could a man do what Solomon did? Now, when he was old, he got away from God. And he, and he um, uh, married these women he shouldn't have married. And then he's building them altars that uh, he's participating in their pagan worship. He's participating in it. Say, he's ecumenical. All roads lead to heaven. And, you know, I, I, don't want my, I don't want my hundreds of wives to get mad at me. So I want to please my wives. And he built those things. See, it's a scary passage in the Bible because it tells how somebody can really get out of the will of God and really mess up their lives. That's Solomon. See, now again, a lot of times Bible commentators, the Bible story books, so forth, oh, Solomon was a great king. Well, I think what happened later in his life, I would never say Solomon was a great king. See, he was not a godly king. He messed up terribly as uh, uh, time uh, went on. Now, uh, what's the lesson for you and me uh, this evening? Now, see, he came from a godly home. The Bible says he loved the Lord. And uh, then... God gave him the gift of wisdom. He was wiser than any other man in the world. He was the greatest political administrator the world had ever seen. God gave him the gift of wisdom. And he still sinned blatantly in the face of God. By the way, there's a great truth there. 
See, God, when we stand before the Lord someday, you and I are not going to be judged for how much we knew our knowledge. We will be judged on the basis of what? How we lived. James 1.22, amen? Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. See, we're judged by how we live and what we do. Solomon was a wise man, but uh, he certainly was not a man that had any self-control and he didn't have wisdom uh, in those, uh, in those uh, uh, areas. Now, you see, um, that's why the New Testament says, 1 Corinthians 10, 11 through 13, the Bible says, take heed, you know, lest ye fall. There is no temptation taken you, but such is common man. But the Bible says, take heed. The Bible says, the passage begins by saying, these things in the Old Testament <clears throat> were written to warn us. That's admonition is warning. Why do you have this passage in the Bible? It's warning. See, it's warning us. And so we read about somebody like Solomon and um, uh, what Paul is saying. Don't think you're above uh, getting out of the will of God. Take heed lest ye fall. See, the Bible teaches very easy to mess up our lives and get out of the will of God. 1 Timothy 4, 1 says, Many shall depart from the faith. See, they're, they're in the faith and they depart from uh, uh, the faith. So, um, we see that uh, great lesson uh, in the Bible. How that these passages like this in the Old Testament should warn us, should scare us about this matter of getting out of the will of God. People can really mess up their lives when they get out of the will of, uh, of God. See, that's why the New Testament is clear. The Old Testament illustrates it. And that is, nobody can ever take a vacation from God. You can never take a vacation uh, from God. You can never take a holiday from God. Now, what do we mean by that? Say, you and I have to stay in the Word of God. We sang it tonight. Did you think to pray? We need to pray. We need to be devoted to prayer. We need to be devoted to the Word of God. We need to be devoted uh, to the church. Why? You take a holiday from God and you can wind up the way Solomon wound up. See, he got out of the will of God. He disobeyed the Bible. See, the Bible teaches we can never get away from the Word of God. We can never say, I've arrived as a Christian. Oh, I'm on the plateau. I'm higher. I'm spiritual. See, here's a man that loved the Lord, the Bible says, as a young man. He built a temple. God gave him wisdom, and he got totally uh, out of the will of God. So um, there's a great lesson there. See, we need to stay in the Word. We need to stay in prayer. That's why the New Testament says, pray without ceasing. Now, again, that doesn't mean, as many interpret it, that you're to pray and keep praying all day, that type of a thing. You know, sentence, sentence prayers to God. That's not what it's saying. In the original language, what it's talking about is that Paul says, pray without ceasing. You need to be devoted to prayer. You need to be a person of prayer. You need to really know what prayer is all about. And you, as an individual, need to be a person of prayer. Most people are not. Most pastors are not. Uh, they uh, spend very little time in prayer and so forth. But, see, we have to pray, we have to be in the Word, and we have to be in church, like I mentioned Sunday morning. You see, uh, we need to be in church. And especially in America, we need to be in church on Wednesday night. I wonder how many uh, retirees, and I wonder what they're doing on Wednesday night. And people that should be in church and are not in church on Wednesday night. Say, are they pampering the flesh? 
Are they building uh, an altar to worship a pagan god? And I dare say some, uh, I'm sure, are, are doing, uh, doing that. So um, we see that very clearly in uh, the Word of God. You see, this Solomon, say, again, this is a scary passage in the Bible. Someone might say, well, Pastor, I've never heard anybody say the Bible will scare you. Well, this passage scares me. It should scare you. It should scare every child of God to be afraid of winding out, winding up where Solomon wound up. Amen? Now keep in mind, God gave him wisdom. The Bible says he loved the Lord. He built a temple. But you see, he really, as 1 Kings chapter 11, but, but, there was a turnaround in the life of Solomon, and he certainly regretted that, um, I'm sure. But you see, that should warn all of us to stay close to the Lord. And if we don't stay close to the Lord, and a lot of that is just being in church, there's no telling where somebody can wind up. They can wind up like Solomon. Solomon was given wisdom, but he had no self-control. He's never filled with the Spirit. He never had the, the power of the Spirit in his life, and he, and he really messed up. So uh, this is an interesting passage in the Bible, and I think it's a powerful passage in the Bible. Now, everybody has heard Solomon had three, uh, 700 wives, 300 concubines. Everybody laughs at it. No, that man was addicted to immorality. He was addicted to sin. He gave his life over when he got older to sinning and disobeying God as an older man. And the, the thing is, there is no clear-cut passage in Kings, Chronicles, Proverbs, or um, Ecclesiastes that Solomon ever repented of having 700 wives and 300 concubines. See, and that's why I believe the Bible teaches he did not repent. And now, next week we'll see God judged him for that. God said he is very patient with Solomon, but then God must judge Solomon, and that's why you have the two kingdoms. See, the split right after he died, the northern ten tribes and the two uh, southern tribes. Anybody have a question or comment before we go to the Lord uh, in prayer? But um, again, I think the best way to look at this passage in the Bible, it's a scary passage. It should scare us into making sure we don't dabble in sin. Make sure we pray. Make sure we're in church. Get out of the will of God. You can get in a lot of trouble. And that certainly is true of Solomon. Anybody have a question, comment, or observation? Yeah. Well, uh, it certainly did. The wise certainly affected Solomon. See, he, see, the Bible says he served these gods or had an affinity for these gods, but then he built the altars because of his wives. See, you talk about that's a good point. And see, I didn't want to get the women in trouble tonight, so I didn't bring that up. But... Uh, but uh, you take a classic illustration in the Bible of women influencing their husband to do the wrong thing. That's why he did it. See, he wanted to please him. And uh, the Bible says that's what, why it's clear. So I think that's a good illustration. The general, in the home, yeah. The mother, the wife has a very big impact on how the home is the set of the home for the children and for the husband. Absolutely. So, yeah. So there's a reason for that, and God knew that, and that's why He told Solomon, "Don't have as many wives," because He yeah. knew that they would, He right. would pull away. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a great uh, truth there. How these wicked pagan uh, women, who are an abomination in the sight of God, according to the Word of God, because of their worship, 
how they influenced him. Now, see, when we think of this thing as self-control, see, it's like Jezebel and Ahab. See, uh, Jezebel encouraged uh, Ahab to kill an innocent man to get his vineyard. So uh, women can influence their husbands the wrong way, that's for sure. Any other question, comment, or observation? Hmm. Yeah. And I got away from God because I'm in, I'm in the worldly stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And later on in life, you know, I came, unlike, at, you know, he did it early. Right. Young, early, I mean, older, but I did it as a young yeah. and came back, you know. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord for that. Amen. There's no question about that. And um, again, uh, the Bible tells it like it is. And uh, uh, again, this is a strong passage in the Bible. But now God's not through with Solomon because he, God will, will say that he was angry with Solomon and he has to judge Solomon. And that's the division of the kingdom. That was the end of the United Kingdom. See, under Saul and David and Solomon, you had the United Kingdom. Because of Solomon's sin, you now have the divided kingdom, the northern and southern kingdom. So, um, but uh, the Bible tells it like it is. And that, again, I think of somebody that did a lot of study in the life of Solomon. See, and he said that, that most everybody does not tell it like it is in the life of Solomon. See, they, um, sometimes people say he was a type of Christ in his kingdom. Now, I'd never use Solomon as a type of Christ. I'd never use him because of what the Bible says tonight. See, in uh, chapter 11, the Bible says God was angry with him. And then God will uh, judge him. Any other question or comment or observation? This is a um, very powerful passage in the Bible. What's crazy to me and hard to comprehend is that if Solomon had repented, the Lord would have forgave him for all of that he did. Yeah. And that's just amazing to me. I think that's another good point. Suppose Solomon married a godly wife. And he had a godly wife. You wouldn't have this chapter in the Bible, Amen. You see, that's another thing we need to realize. See, if he did it God's way, see, for 300 years, he wouldn't, uh, by, uh, by his testimony and what he did, sending people to hell for 300 years. And finally, uh, the Babylonians destroyed all those idols. See, now uh, Josiah did uh, uh, also. See, and uh, some of the kings, they tried to do that, but they were few and far between. And they last it until the end of the uh, kingdom. Well, I trust that God will speak to our hearts. Let's turn in our hymn book to page number th uh, 470. Amen. Let's turn and sing a stanza, page 470. Uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. And boy, if we need to make a decision to follow Jesus, don't go along with the peer pressure. Don't do what everybody else is doing. And um, make sure you confess your sin and Get your heart right with God. Don't let sin linger in your life. Don't, don't allow uh, uh, sin to uh, uh, play around in your life or don't play around with sin. Don't, don't dabble in sin because it can have terrible consequences. And so, again, of all the places in the Bible, I refer to this as a scary chapter in the Bible. You can get in a lot more trouble than you ever dreamed of you get out of the will of God. The devil says, oh, it's nice. No, you get out of the will of God. You can really mess up. And you can mess up other people also and create a lot of difficulty by getting out of the will of God.